Welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and this video is a reader request. The reader wanted to know all about the gradient tool and the gradient panel in Illustrator, so that's what I'm going to show you. A gradient in Illustrator is a type of fill in which color transitions, or gradates, from one to another. Gradients must have at least two colors, but can also have many. A gradient can be linear or radial. So in a radial gradient, it starts with one color and then radiates out to the other. I'm going to set this back on linear for now, and we'll look at the radial gradients later. Over here on the left of the panel are all of the gradients that have been recently used in this document. So you can choose from these here, and if you've created a new gradient, you can save it to your swatches panel by clicking this icon. And there it is in my swatches panel. You have the fill and stroke swatches here, and you can apply a gradient to a stroke as of Illustrator CS6, and we'll look at that in a minute. Clicking this button will reverse the gradient, and what that does is swap the colors so the orange is on the left and the purple is on the right now. In this field, you can change the angle of the gradient, so now you can see that that angle is at 45 degrees. I'm going to set that back on zero. This is the gradient slider, and these are the gradient stops. So when I click on the orange stop, you see it has a heavy black outline, meaning that I can adjust the color and the opacity of this stop. The location refers to where it is on the slider, so I can just manually slide it, and now you can see on my object that there's more orange than there is purple, or I can enter a precise percentage in the location field. So if I knew that I wanted it at exactly 30% on the object, I can change that here. You can also adjust the opacity of the gradient stops in this field. When you have transparency on a gradient stop, you can see that the stop has a little extra thing on the bottom indicating that transparency. I'm going to set this back at 100. And I'll put the location back at 0. This diamond shape on the top of the slider indicates the relative distance between each color stop. I can slide it left or right manually, or I can enter a specific percentage in the location field. So if I wanted it equidistant between each color, I could enter 50%. You can add a stop to the gradient by hovering over the slider, and when you get a plus symbol on your cursor, click to add a new color. This gradient stop is active, so I can double click on it to adjust its color. Here I have the RGB color sliders, and I can use those, or I can use my eyedropper, or I can switch to swatches view and choose from one of the swatches in my document. I'll put its location right in the center, and now I have a three stop gradient. I can also change the color of the active stop by dragging a swatch down on top of it from the swatches panel. I can also create a new swatch this way by dragging a color swatch onto an empty space on the slider. And you can see that the cursor gets a green plus sign when I'm adding a stop. I'm going to set this gradient back to the one that we saved earlier and change it to a radial gradient. I'm going to adjust the angle, but it really doesn't make any difference because my radial gradient is a perfect circle. I can change the aspect ratio of the gradient in this field. So I'll put it on 30%, and now you can see that it's more of an oval than a circle. And now when I change the angle, you can see what that looks like on the object. I'm going to add a stop to this gradient, and again I'll double click on it and change its color from the swatches panel. You can press the Escape key to get rid of that, or you can just click off the slider. If I want to delete a stop in a gradient, I can either click on the trash can here, or I can just drag it off the slider. Now let's look at applying a gradient to a stroke. I'm going to select this top path here, and in my gradient panel, I'll bring the stroke forward, and then I can choose from any of these gradients I've just used, or any other gradient available in the library. I'm just going to pick this new gradient swatch that we created a moment ago. So now you can see that the gradient is applied to the stroke, and you have three options. The first one is to apply the gradient within the stroke. And this simply means that the gradient is applied just as you see it in the gradient panel. And in this case I have an angle of zero degrees, so it's just going from left to right, almost as though that stroke were outlined. But it's not, it's a regular single stroke path. The next option is apply gradient along stroke, and it's hard to tell the difference with a path like this, but you can see that the colors have switched places because the beginning of this stroke is actually on the right, and that it ends up over on the left. And the gradient follows the curve of that stroke. 
Again, it's kind of hard to see, but when I apply it to a circle, it'll make more sense. The third option is to apply the gradient across the stroke, and this means that it's going from one side of the path to the other. So you can see the purple on the bottom and the orange on the top. I'm going to duplicate this color stop by holding down my Option key, or the Alt key on Windows, and dragging out another one in the middle. Now I'll double click on this stop to change its color. And again, you can use either the swatches view or the color sliders view. I'm just going to adjust this blue a little bit, and then hit the Escape key to get out of that. And now you can see that that gradient is following the path at a perpendicular angle. I'll do the same thing with this closed circle. I'll apply that three-stop gradient, and the first choice, again, is Apply Gradient Within Stroke. And you can see that it's just going from left to right because I have an angle of zero degrees, so it looks exactly like it does in the gradient panel. If I click Apply Gradient Along Stroke, now you can see that it is starting with the purple over here and going all the way around to the blue. Now there's a hard edge here because this is a closed path. If you wanted the blue to blend into the purple, you could add a fourth color stop on the end with that same purple. Now I'll click the third option, Apply Gradient Across Stroke, and you can see what happens there. So before Illustrator CS6, when this feature was introduced, if you wanted to get this effect, you'd have to use a rather complex blend. But now you can just apply a gradient to a stroke without having to expand it. Now let's look at the Gradient tool. But first I want to show you a quick shortcut. Over here in the toolbar, you see the three types of fills a color fill, a gradient fill, and no fill. Each of these have a keyboard shortcut, and they're all in a row on your keyboard. So for a regular solid fill, it's the comma key. This shape, of course, is already filled. The gradient keyboard shortcut is the period, which will fill the selected object with the last gradient used. In this case, it's a simple linear black to white gradient. And to remove the fill, or a fill of none, you just press the slash key. Now when I select the gradient tool, I can't click on the object to fill it with a gradient, and that confuses some people. Instead, I'll go over to my gradient panel and choose a gradient from here. Now when I have a gradient filled object and the gradient tool selected, I get what's called a gradient annotator on my object. And this feature was introduced in CS4. Now if you don't see this gradient annotator on your object, you might have to go up to the View menu and choose Show Gradient Annotator. And what this does is basically place a gradient slider directly on your object. On the annotator, you'll see a black circle, which is the origin of the gradient, and a black diamond on the other end, which is the terminus, or the end of the gradient. I can drag the terminus and make the gradient smaller, or I can actually drag it outside the object to make the gradient fall differently. Just like on the gradient panel, I can adjust the gradient stops, and I can double click them to change their color, their opacity, and location. You can press the Escape key to dismiss the panel. When I hover over the end of the gradient, you can see that my cursor gets a little rotate icon on it, and I can use that to change the angle of the gradient. Now, since this is a radial gradient and has an aspect ratio of 100%, you can't really see a difference. I'll change the aspect ratio to say 40%, and now you can see that reflected on the gradient annotator and the object itself. If I hover over the black circle on this dotted line, I can change the aspect ratio visually, and you can see that reflected as a percentage on the gradient panel. And again, I can change the angle of the gradient and modify those gradient stops directly on the object. I can move the gradient annotator and have that gradient start at a different place in my object. And again, I can change the aspect ratio visually. I'll go over here and choose a linear gradient, and this one has five color stops. And again, I can change how that gradient is positioned within the object, and I can adjust the individual stops directly on the object. I can double click and change the color and I can move the gradient's position on the object. Now when I do this with a linear gradient, you can see a dotted rectangle. And that's just letting you know where the origin of the gradient is going to end up once you let go. So you can see it snapped back to that position on the object. Again, I can change the gradient's angle 
And if you want to constrain that angle to increments of 45 degrees, hold down the Shift key while rotating. And that will snap that angle to increments of 45. If I want to remove a stop, just like you do on the panel, I can just drag it off the annotator. So the annotator makes it a lot easier to precisely position your gradients directly on an object. When you have more than one object selected, or a group of objects, you can use the Gradient tool to apply a gradient that spans all of the objects or all of the objects in the group. So if I select this group and just apply a radial gradient to it, you can see that it applies the gradient to each individual shape in the group. And too much of a good thing is not very good in this case. So I'm going to take my gradient tool, and with the group selected, just drag across that whole group, and I'll hide the edges, so you can see that that's a much more subtle and pleasing way to use a gradient in this type of illustration. So that pretty much covers the Gradient Tool and the Gradient Panel in Illustrator.